So by 1890, as I've covered in the previous video, Chicago was really turning into an overcrowded, crime-infested network of European immigrant ghettos. Every ethnicity had their own neighborhood. They each had their own kind of like inner circles and business networks. And everybody kind of maintained these cohesive units like within their own communities. And outsiders, and by outsiders that includes the law, they couldn't really have access to these communities unless they knew somebody and had an in. So crime was rampant at this point, okay, because you're not going to the police, you're handling everything internally. And on top of that, gambling, prostitution, all these things at this time are flourishing in Chicago. The politics is getting very corrupt. And as I mentioned in the uh, video with uh, Big Jim Colosimo, the Italian immigrants that are coming over are forming these black hand syndicates. So these are basically just extortionists. Uh, the term protection money really is not accurate because they were not protecting anybody in return for this money. They were just extorting their own people. And the Italians were really getting sick of it, uh, the Italian community. They were terrorizing their neighborhoods. Uh, they were oppressing their own people. They were extorting, you know, they're going around and they're doing this to other Italians, okay? Just taking their money, basically robbing them. So in 1907, uh, the Italians decided to fight back against these black hand syndicates that were oppressing them, okay? And what happened was that they formed an organization called the White Hand, okay? Now don't confuse this White Hand with the White Hand Irish gang out in New York. That's a different White Hand gang. That, that was an actual gang out there, but this was not a gang. This was like an anti-gang organization of Italians that was basically trying to cleanse their community of these black hand uh, gangs. So in the 1890s, street gangs, you know, were starting to form that eventually were gonna basically get absorbed into the larger criminal syndicates. Like for example, along 15th Street, there was something called the Valley Gang that were basically just pickpockets and thieves. And uh, they eventually clicked up with the Chicago outfit um, they were battling a, gang, a street gang called the Reagan's Colts. Uh, the Chicago Outfit, you know, they eventually, uh, like, made a lot of these smaller gangs subordinate to them. Like, you know how in, out in California now, you know, you have a lot of the street gangs that are kind of subordinate to the Mexican Mafia? It was a similar kind of situation. Um, now, also in the 1890s, uh, two guys, De Dion O'Banion and Bugs Moran, who eventually were going to become, you know, top guys in the North Side Irish gang, they were born uh, in this time, and they were born. Well, Dion O'Banion grew up on the uh, in that Little Hell neighborhood, which it now is Cabrini Green. Okay, but before that, remember I had made a video about this. I don't know if you guys, uh, if you didn't see the video, I discussed the history of Cabrini Green, and Cabrini Green started off like as a as a European immigrant ghetto that was extremely high crime. There was a guy, there was an assassin that worked over there called Shotgun Man. And the number of murders that he racked up is not even known to this day. But one of the uh, things that the White Hand was trying to do was to get out basically all the killers from the neighborhood. Okay, the guys who were just racking up murder after murder. A lot of the murders, you know, were going on because of this, this extortion racket. If you didn't pay up, you were going to be maimed or you were going to be killed. So uh, the shotgun man was one of the guys who they were actually trying to get busted. But the White Hand, unfortunately... He didn't have the kind of success, obviously we can look back today and know in hindsight it didn't have the kind of success that uh, the Italians had hoped for. But some of the details though, the White Hand was formed by the Italian Chamber of Commerce, the Italian newspapers, and several Italian fraternal orders. And it was also, uh, there were also a lot of Italian business and businessmen and professionals that joined this thing. These guys hired a lot of lawyers and they hired a lot of private eyes. And uh, they were, you know, basically going to try to do this the legal way, okay? So they were not going to fight the black hand in the streets. They were going to do it through the courts. Um, but all these guys got death threats, okay? The black hand was coming after these white hand guys. I mean, they're going against them. So, uh, but they tried to get the police to help them out. Now, previously, the police had not really been able to help them out because, like I said, the Italian community was very, was very close, like the outsiders and the police. You couldn't really, you wouldn't know who was who, like you couldn't, really navigate the, the networks of that community without knowing uh, somebody. But these white handers were Italian, so they were able to do that. So uh, they actually did achieve several convictions of black hand members. And the guys who they considered, except for that shotgun man, they did get the 10 top most notorious 
uh, gangsters of that time. Okay, now that shot, except for Shotgun Man. Okay, now Shotgun Man's government name, unfortunately, I don't know, but um, these guys, though, after they got booked, they were very quickly released uh, and they were paroled. And, you know, Chicago was a dirty place. What can I say? They shouldn't have been released, but they were. Uh, and after they were released, they went right back to their uh, their illegal activities, even worse than before. So this white hand thing only lasted five years. The head of it was a guy named Dr. Joseph Damiani. And uh, he said in an interview with a newspaper called the Chicago Record Herald, uh, he said that the, the group was, quote, so discouraged by the lax administration of justice that they were refusing to advance further money to prosecute men arrested on their complaints. So basically, you know, the law wasn't helping them out. Uh, they were trying to do things the legal way, and it just was not working. And the fact that they couldn't get shotgun, man, that was a big, uh, that, that was a big, like, letdown to them. He was, he had done a lot of these murders for the black hand. So the witnesses, you know, this was a huge problem, like, trying to get guys to testify. Back then, you didn't have video cameras and all the, you know, the material evidence that we had today. You were really relying on witnesses and try being a witness, you know, if you're an Italian back then and you got to go back home to your neighborhood where these black hand guys control, like, what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Your family could be touched. I mean, there's a lot of messed up uh, possibilities. But another thing that uh, made the white hand fall was the fact that Italians were getting backlash from non-Italians in Chicago. They were getting, like, backlash from regular Americans because the white hand was exposing a lot of the black hands activities that previously these americans it wasn't really on their radar like we take for granted now how famous the mafia is and how well the mafia is known well back then it wasn't really that well known okay you know non-italians didn't really know what the mafia was uh hollywood really exposed that you know a lot of the a lot of the novels and the the movies that have been made like the average american probably today knows what the mafia is but back then they didn't know so these white handers were exposing this in the courts and it was making Italians look terrible. You know what I'm saying? The fact that, you know, they were bringing this black hand to light, they felt like this was creating a lot of negative stereotypes and a lot of prejudice against Italians, which it actually was. So the regular Italians in the neighborhood were telling the white hand, look, you know, let's just leave this, you know, it's like, uh, it's like they say, you know, leave this in the streets. Like, don't bring this into the courts where it's going to become a, a national spectacle and make us look terrible. I mean, it was really going on, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, this wasn't just made up stuff. But, I mean, that's how they, that's how they viewed it. So, in 1913, uh, the white hand fell apart. And the black hand, they went all out at that point. Now, eventually, the black hand got replaced by the Chicago outfit. Um, they eventually got, you know, just defeated by another gang. But um, up until that point... You know, they basically had their way. And this became an unfortunate, you know, series of events in the history of Chicago, man, because it sent a message, you know, to everybody that reverberates until this day that, like, illegal stuff is the way to get stuff done. And that's, I mean, that is the wrong message to send, man. Like, one of the reasons why Chicago is such a dirty place, one of the reasons why it's had so much racial conflict, you know, one of the reasons why it's got so many areas that are so entrenched in poverty is because of the culture of crime, you know what I'm saying, that started all the way back then. And... At least, uh, you know, you got to give these Italians their props for trying to uh, for trying to put a stop to that, especially at the threat to their own life. Um, but unfortunately, it was not successful. This is something that's been rare in Chicago's history. I can't honestly think of another organization that has gotten together within an ethnic group to fight to try to fight crime within their own ethnic group in this way. Uh, I know that there are organizations that, uh, for example, like will try to train uh, gang members and stuff like that in in uh, various job fields to try to get them out of the streets that way. Uh, I know that there's organizations that try to mediate gang conflicts. You know, the black community has a lot of these. Those are a really positive influence. But as far as organizations that come together with, you know, businessmen and lawyers and stuff like this to try to actually bust the gang members in their neighborhood um, through the courts, I can't think of another one. Uh, we have an organization here called the, called the Guardian Angels. They may exist in other cities too, um, which basically like uh, stand guard uh, in certain places where there's typically a lot of muggings and stuff like that at night, like on L platforms and things of that uh, nature, and they try to make it safer, safer for people. Um, there's a number of citizen groups that try and do this, but um, yeah, as far as guys who actually try to um, do the 
you know, the, the state's attorney and the police's job for them and go after guys in their own community and help the cops book guys. I can't think of another one, man, um, that's happened since then. And, you know, I'm always learning more about Chicago history myself, too. You know, the learning, the learning never stops. So I may come up with that at some point, you know, and find that. But, um, yeah, this is the white hand is so far the only one that I've found. If any of you guys know any, um, you know, that you'd like me uh, to do videos on, you can leave it in the comment section because this is, a, this is an interesting kind of an organization and, a, and an anomaly in the Chicago political scene. Thanks for watching, guys. This is your boy, Winnie City Report. I'm out.